This video is all about how we calculate something called the interquartile range. Now, it sounds very tricky, but actually it's not that hard. So in geography, very often, we want to calculate the average from a set of data. Okay, so we want to find out the average number from a group of numbers. There are four different ways we can do that. We can use the mean, we can use the mode, we can use the median, and we can use the interquartile range. Okay, so let's start by thinking about the mean. If we use the mean, we simply add up the numbers. So we add up all the numbers that are over here on the left-hand side. There are nine numbers here in total, so then we would divide by nine. If you want to work out the mode, the mode is the most common number, okay? So here we've got 110, 29, 24, 19. There's only one of these numbers here, but there are two 22s. Therefore, it is the most common number, and that would be your mode. The median is fairly easy to do. You simply put the numbers in order from the lowest number to the highest number. So we go from three at the bottom to 110 at the top, and then you simply find the number that's in the middle, and that is the median. And finally, we can use the interquartile range. Now, before we go on, uh, just a quick note on why we use each of these different types of average. Um, first of all, an anomaly is a number that doesn't fit the general pattern. So if we have a look at our data over here again, we can see that most of the numbers are roughly around 20, 20 um, somewhere between sort of 19 and 29. So they're roughly around 20. However, there are two very obvious anomalies in this data. 110, much, much higher than the other data. And three is much, much lower than the other data. Okay. So when we want to get rid of these anomalies, we want to get rid of these two numbers and find the average number in here. Um, we normally use the median or the interquartile range. They're the two that we use to get rid of anomalies. If you have no anomalies, use the mean or the mode. So what does the interquartile range actually do? I want you to imagine each of these black dots is a piece of data or is a number. Okay. Um, the interquartile range is trying to find the middle 50%. So we're not trying to find this bottom 25%. We're not trying to find this top 25%, we're just trying to find the 50% that's in the middle. Okay, so we want to get rid of this number here and these two numbers down here because most of our data is in the middle 50%. So just to recap, we use the interquartile range to get rid of an anomaly. Anomalies are bits of data that don't fit the general pattern. And the interquartile range finds the middle 50% and you chop off the data at the top 25% and the bottom 25%. Okay, so how do we actually work out the interquartile range? Let's use the numbers from earlier. So here we've got the nine numbers again. First thing we do is we put the numbers in order uh, from lowest to highest. So we go from three up to 110. Second thing we do is we divide the numbers up into an upper quartile and a lower quartile. Okay, so here we have nine numbers. That's an odd number of numbers. So we have to get rid of the middle number. So we cross out 22 as it's in the middle. If you had an even number of numbers, supposing you had eight numbers here, you simply draw a line down the middle and divide them into four on one side and four on the other. So here's our lower quarter. These are the bottom four numbers. And here's our top quarter. These are the top four numbers. Next thing we do is we find the median, the middle number of each quartile, okay? So if we have a look at our bottom quartile, the median would be somewhere between 19 and 21. Well, the number that's between those two is of course 20. So the median here is 20. On this side, we're trying to find the middle number between 28 and 29. Well, of course, that would be 28.5, okay? Now, if you can't work out the middle number, supposing there's a big gap between these two, you simply add these two numbers together and divide by two. And finally, you take the smaller median, this one here, the lower quartile, away from the bigger median. So we simply do 28.5, take away 20, and the interquartile range is therefore 8.5, okay? 
Okay, so now time for a bit of practice. I'd like you to pause the video uh, for about five minutes to have a go at these three questions. So can you pause the video in three, two, one. Okay, welcome back. So question one said, would you use the mean or the interquartile range? Well, if we look at these numbers here, most of them are roughly around 30. There's not any anomalies here, so we'd use the mean. However, for this, this set of numbers, we've got two, four, seven, one, nine, six, and 44. 44 is clearly an anomaly. It doesn't fit with, the, with these numbers here, okay? And therefore we would use the interquartile range. And finally, calculate the interquartile range for the following numbers. Okay, let's remember step one, them in order from lowest to highest. So from one to 49. Step two, find the lower quartile and the upper quartile. Well, here it's very easy because there's only six numbers. So you divide down the middle, you've got a line down here. And here we've got our lower quartile and our upper quartile. Then you simply find the median for each side. And again, it's very easy here. We simply find the middle number. So two is the median here. 33 is the median on this side. And then we do 33, take away two, and the answer is 31. If you have any more questions, please speak to your geography teacher.